Welcome to the Recon and Discovery module for Buckroud University. My name is Sajib Lahani, and I go by SML555. I'm a senior pen tester in Privasec Red, which is in Australia, Melbourne, and I'm a Buckroud ambassador. So first things first, a big shout out to Jason Haddix, or um, Jaddix. Basically, he made the original content for this entire talk, and it is amazing. So all I've done is built on top of that. And the next big shout out is to the actual bug bounty community. Um, if everyone did not share tools and ideas together, we'd never be able to come as far as we have. So it's great that we all get to share and contribute. So for the recon and discovery module, first we start off with a recon workflow, so a bit of a methodology about the different ways of doing recon. Then after that, we go into how to discover the IP space for a certain target. We'll move into how to identify different targets like TLDs and things like that. Then we'll move into different types of subdomain enumeration and different methods for doing it. Move into a bit of fingerprinting and dorking to find more information. Then we'll also move into content discovery and parameter discovery. Finally, we'll touch on automation and some acknowledgements for how we ended up getting this job done. So talking about the recon workflow, we'll start off by actually trying to discover everything that we can in the IP space for the company, provided they're big enough to actually have an IP space dedicated to them. Then after that, we'll look into the TLDs, the top level domains for that company. We'll look into the different acquisitions, provided they are in scope. And we'll look at the relationships between the companies to see if there's anything that we can exploit there too. Then we'll move on to subdomain enumeration and use tools to try to identify more attack surface. We'll fingerprint the application so that we can narrow down our attack surface and try to understand exactly how and where we should prioritize our time. Then we'll move into dorking, trying to identify more information and more sensitive information. And finally, we'll move into content discovery and parameter discovery, trying to identify more content and parameters and narrow down aspects and find more and more sensitive information. So discovering the IP space. First, we start off by looking into the different ASNs. So first, let's go to the Hurricane Electric website and search for Tesla. Tesla here, we can see Tesla Incorporated, which is the official company name for Tesla. Uh, so let's click into one of the ASNs and look up prefixes version 4. Here we can see the version 4 IP addresses within the CIDR notation. Um, so each of these are hypothetically within scope. The next thing we can do is use a who is command to find the CIDR notation for tesla.com, the actual domain. So all we have to do is run this who is command with a dig command within it, making sure that we find the exact IP address of tesla.com. Here we do have to be quite wary that we don't actually get the, C, uh, the ASN for things like um, VPSs such as DigitalOcean, AWS, and things like that. So do be very careful with this um, as it can backfire. The next thing is we can try to find subdomains using AMAS for each of these ASNs. Uh, this can be done pretty easily by running AS, uh, AMAS, Intel, and then using the organization Tesla. It comes back and tells you the ASN, and then after that we can make a very simple Intel command again with ASN specified, um, which will eventually spit back every single subdomain uh, within that range. After that, we can use Aaron and write. So yet again, all we have to do is simply search for Tesla. And here we can find the different network ranges and ASNs yet again. And within RIPE, we can find a fair bit of information. inclusive of INET numbers, different countries, ranges, and things like that.
Finally, we can always use Showdown using an organization uh, query. So running org and then Tesla. Uh, do note that there is no gap in between the colon and the quotation marks. Uh, this finds pretty much everything. Uh, however, this does also go through and find different place, uh, different organizations uh, named Tesla. So beware, as that may bring in certain false positives. Next, we have discovering new targets, brands, and TLDs. So we've kind of made a little bit of a diagram to display how to find different brands and TLDs. So the first thing we like to do is go and find the different acquisitions so we can see whether there's anything actually, you know, or whether there's a tax surface that many other people may not have discovered. Um, keeping an eye on acquisitions is great. So, you know, maybe subscribe to the companies and find out if they've actually had any recent acquisitions or are they planning to acquire anyone else? It does help. But do note that usually acquisitions are not in scope um, until six months after the acquisition. Um, after that, we also look at different related domains. This can be related in uh, things like analytics. It can be related in who is information, dorks, and things like that. So, you know, there's different types of relations to everything. So the acquisitions part, first we'll move into Wikipedia. So for that, all we do is a quick and simple Wikipedia search for Tesla. We find Tesla Incorporated. And if we go down, we can see subsidiaries. It has four subsidiaries listed here. Next, we move on to Crunchbase, which also specifies the number of acquisitions within. So yet again, go search for Tesla. And if we go down, you can see the number of acquisitions over here, which lists five acquisitions this time. So technically, if it's an open scope, you'll have all of these acquisitions that you can actually attack, which increases the attack surface significantly. After that, we also have Owler. So yet again, search for Tesla. And you have in the acquisition section, a bit of a description about each company, how much it was bought for and things like that. After that, we can also try acquired by. Here we can see there are four different companies acquired by Tesla. And then we can search for LinkedIn. Over here in LinkedIn, it's a little bit different. You have affiliated pages instead. So these are technically pages that it might be affiliated with. And after that, um, you might have something like similar pages. So SpaceX is technically owned by the same person, but not the same company. So there might be relations there. After that, we have reverse who is. So we can run that through AMS, um, through the Intel module, specifying dash D, which defines which domain we're running it for. And then we use the who is flag, which defines that we're going to do a reverse who is check. In green, you can see the different domains that are related to tesla.com. And it's as simple as that. Next, we can look up built with. So in built with, if we go to tesla.com, we can see all the different types of analytics and tracking that it has. And if we go to relationships, we can see the different analytics codes being used. So things like Google Analytics, you can see that the same analytics is being used in different websites. So they are very likely to be um, by either the same vendor that has created the website or by Tesla themselves. After that, we can use things like Google Dorks to look up copyright. 
So in this case, unfortunately, we don't get other things a part of the attack surface, but we can see different places where Tesla images have been put up and places where Tesla acknowledges that uh, the existence of different companies. And finally, we can use shared and orcs. In this case, um, we use HTTP favicon hashes so that we can, uh, this specifically has been used to be defining um, Jenkins, the Jenkins favicon. So all we have to do is search for that specific favicon hash, and we find all the different, Jen different Jenkins instances known to showdown. And then after that, we can further narrow it down to whichever organization we require. So now we move on to the next part of the module, uh, the subdomain enumeration part. So we start off with AMS. AMS is a pretty interesting piece of software. AMS automatically in the enum uh, section of it, automatically goes through and does basic enumeration. It does um, brute forcing, reverse DNS sweeps, and then it goes and actually tries to scrape different parts of um, you know, search engines and things like that. And it also pulls, thing, pulls data from different certificates and different APIs and puts it all into one place for us in an easy manner so that we can just simply scrape off the uh, subdomains that we want and keep moving with our process. So we can run the AMS command, uh, which is AMS enum dash D, and if you want the IP addresses, dash IP. And it takes a few minutes to run. As you can see, there's a list of different IP ranges and subdomains, all for tesla.com. Another big thing to note for AMS is make sure that you actually fill out the config.ini file. Um, there's a lot of really good data here, and if you actually fill it out with the different API keys for Alien Vault and Shodan, then um, you can actually get access to a lot more data than just the baseline tool. The next tool, uh, which is a bit outdated now, is Subfinder. Subfinder, even though it's still not really used much, it still does have a few extra sources, which is nice. So you can run it with 25 threads, time out of five, and silent. Silent implies it doesn't actually print out any of the errors or um, debugs or anything. It just prints out the subdomains. And there we go. We have a list of subdomains. The next major thing that we can do is um, DNS brute forcing. So there's a list called all.txt, uh, all which is a bit overkill, but it's still a decent baseline. So we can download that, which is a GitHub gist. Um, we can also, after we've run the actual DNS brute forcing, we can use go alt DNS to get permutations of each of these different um, current subdomains that are there for example, like this. And then after that, we can also use common speak to to um, use big queries to go through and attempt to find different formats for subdomains and things like that. So an example of how to actually run mass DNS. So first we download all.txt, which takes a couple of seconds. Then after that, we use a very simple set command to add um, tesla.com to the end of each line inside all.txt. And finally, we run um, a mass DNS command, which then states that the output should be simple, so that it's nothing particularly complicated. We can read it easily, parse it easily, and go ahead with our job. Uh, one major difference between MassDNS and GoBuster is MassDNS is significantly faster than GoBuster. However, MassDNS does also get you blacklisted from a lot of DNS resolvers. Uh, due to this fact, you do have a lot of either false positives or false negatives with MassDNS, whereas GoBuster is um, virtually 100% accuracy. 
Another thing to note is also the DNS resolvers within the repository may be out of date. Um, I don't think it's been updated anytime recently. Uh, there is another project which is currently in development. I believe Codingo and Vortex are working on it. And um, that is a tool which simply goes through and grabs a list of different resolvers on the internet and tries to find which ones are legit and which ones are not, and then gives you a list of these resolvers. So when that comes out, it'll be quite useful. So now we can check out the results, and we can see there's a whole bunch of different subdomains within Tesla found. After that, we can go into looking at Rapid7's FDNS project, which is for DNS. So here they actually create um, gzips of different JSON data. So um, the example given in the slides is at the time of writing the slides, the latest um, any DNS res resolutions for the entire internet um, known to Rapid7 at that current point in time. Basically, what we can do is wget or download the um, gzip file and then go and pretty much cat the gzip file, parse it, and look for our specific organization within the JSON data. So how we can do that is... Simple command, so this already has everything downloaded. All we have to do is run the command and wait for the file to be read, parsed, and data to be displayed. And there you go. You have a list of the different Tesla subdomains. After this, we can also use search stream. So search stream is a live stream of all the um, transparency logs going through for each SSL cert. However, um, usually you'd be grepping it with the company name. For the span of this talk, we're probably not going to do that because it's unlikely Tesla will be pushing anything new. Next up in the recon and discovery module is fingerprinting. So fingerprinting is basically when we try to identify what the application is actually made of, what services are running, what content management systems are being used, and things like that, so that we can narrow down the attack surface and try to prioritize our time on more important things. So we'll start off by using built with. We look up tesla.com, and here we can see different tracking being used, different widgets, frameworks, payment systems, CDNs, CMSs, and JavaScript libraries. So this helps us narrow down exactly what kind of software is being used by Tesla and what type of attack vectors we can look at. Next, we'll also look at Webalizer, which is what I use as a Chrome plugin. And it's pretty simple. All you do is click on the button and you can see all the different software is being used, so CMSs, load balancers, programming languages being used, etc. So it's pretty easy to use and it's very visual, which is nice. But for the people who want to be a little bit more on the automated side and a lot more scalable, there's also something called WhatWeb, which is nice and easy to use. All you have to do is write WhatWeb and then the domain, and it'll actually spit out a fair bit of information about it. So Let's go try it out. So notice how WhatWeb actually goes and follows the redirection from the HTTP to the HTTPS, which is great. It identified that an Apache server is running. Um, it found the IP address. It found different headers and the title and things like that. It found that it's running jQuery, which is pretty helpful stuff. Um, it does also identify whether or not the cookies have HTTP only and secure flags and things like that, so that can be helpful for certain bugs. Then after that, we can try enumerating the different services. So for this, I like to use Mascan to quickly go and find out which ports are open uh, at a very fast rate, 
and then use Nmap to go and find out and fingerprint which services are open on those ports. So we'll quickly just run this mascan command. Now we'll quickly, since now we know that port 80 and 443 are open, we can narrow down the nmap scan uh, and then use the dash sv command or flag to identify the fact that we are only looking for software versions or server versions in this case. Cool, so unfortunately we couldn't actually fingerprint the services running on uh, the open ports. However, sometimes you are in luck and you actually can find out. Next, we can try using Aquaturn. So Aquaturn is great for, you know, grabbing a list of subdomains and then trying to find out which ports are open. Um, usually you'll try finding that out beforehand. Uh, so it's a little bit more efficient. And then you can use Aquaturn to go and screenshot each of these open ports and then hopefully you can find out more information from a visual representation of it. So we run the command, cutting in a list of Tesla subdomains. And there you go. It writes you a quick report for it, which is pretty nice. And it also gives you a very quick summary of what happened throughout the discovery process. Then after that, we have the classic Wayback Machine enumeration. This is something that Jason Haddock tweeted um, and was in the previous set of slides. Um, I thought I'd keep it in because it is still extremely relevant. We'll go through about how we can automate the Wayback Machine URLs using Tom Nom Nom's tool, but it is still very, very relevant. Unfortunately, we don't have a demo for this. Is dorking. So this is basically where we use specific filters and things like that to go and narrow down the information that we're getting from specific services. Uh, this really does help in finding more information hidden on the internet. So here we have some easy showdown dorks, which we'll run through. The first one is specifying org, as in the organization, as Tesla. So here we can see 182 different servers um, of which 105 are actually Tesla, so beware of false positives. Um, and we can go through and see what kind of information are there on the servers and whether we can leverage it to do something, um, what kind of services are running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Next, we have SSL, which implies we're actually looking at different parts of the SSL cert to then um, match it back with Tesla. And upon matching, it then comes onto this search. Here we can see there's a lot more hosts, and these are actually a fair bit more accurate. They, um, you can prove ownership to Tesla, which is great. Here we can see some of the servers are invalid. However, there are definitely a fair few valid ones that you can also look into. So here you can kind of see how um, Shodan does help a fair bit because it's already got port scans done and certain information waiting for you ready, where all you have to do is narrow down the searches to find information and then start attacking in an efficient manner. We can narrow things down further by using HTTP component. Here we've narrowed it down to say every single Drupal instance known to Shodan with Tesla within the SSL certificate um, show us what you've got. And there you go, it's already displayed that we have Tesla service as um, one of the, well, the only domain that runs Drupal. Next, we can also do the same thing, but with HTTP title instead. So we're looking for certain words within the HTTP title, or the HTML title. Here we're looking for the word login, and then we're adding on the fact that within the SSL cert, we need to have Tesla. So here you can see you have Tesla SSO um, login. 
The remainder of them seem to be false positives, or quite likely to be false positives, but at least you do have something there. After that, we can also look into things like census. So here we're also going to do the same thing by looking at certain parts of the TLS certificate and then trying to match it with Tesla or Tesla Motors. Here we've run the command and we can see Tesla Motors is in each and every one of these certificates. So these are definitely earned by Tesla in some capacity. Now we have to go further and try to enumerate them, find out exactly what's running and what's not, whether they're likely attack vectors. Basically, we fingerprint them further and try to figure out whether we want to spend time attacking this host or not. After that, we can also do things like GitHub talks. These are some examples. Um, the first one will actually try to identify any plain text passwords within GitHub um, stored within either commits or code. Second will be anything with tesla.com and key. And the third is tesla.com and API. Sometimes you can find hidden API endpoints and things like that, which can help a fair bit. Another thing that you should also watch out for is a tool named Dorky. Codingo is writing it at the moment. And as soon as it releases, I'm pretty sure it'll take off well. It's going to be a fun little tool, which will help you automate the dorking process a fair bit, which will be really, really useful. Segment is a content discovery segment. To start it off, we're going to look at the burp crawler. So here's my burp suite project. I have the scope defined extremely loosely for Tesla, so you might want to narrow that down. But we'll go to tesla.com and make sure that we have a proxy on properly. So here you can see the requests coming into the Burp Suite project and certain assets being discovered. Now we can right click and go to scan in the drop down menu. We can click on the crawl option and check the scan configurations to see if we need to change anything. We'll keep it default for this one. We can also check for resource pools to see if we need to thread it. Um, in any way, shape, or form, and we'll kick off the scan. You'll see inside the dashboard a new job has opened up. So you can look at the event log to see if anything different is happening, and you can see that it's finding unique locations as it's going. This basically implies that Burp Suite will follow links and things like that to attempt to identify different resources within Tesla. Uh, which can prove advantageous to us. After this, we can simply go to target and look at the sitemap and try to identify different endpoints which might be interesting to us. After that, we have Link Finder. Link Finder is a small software which helps us go through the different JavaScript files uh, on the actual target and then parses them and extracts possible links. We can use this uh, using the exact command on the screen. And as we can see, inclusive of parameters, we can find a lot of different endpoints, which may prove helpful in the future. Then there's JS Parser, which is a very similar software. Uh, we won't be showing that in the demo today. After that, we have GoBuster and RecurseBuster. So the difference between GoBuster and RecurseBuster is GoBuster is, uh, does a lot more than just directory brute forcing. It can also do DNS, vhost scanning, and things like that. Um, whereas RecurseBuster um, only does uh, directory brute forcing, but it also recursively um, does the directory brute forcing. And Recurse Buster builds it, has built in head support, so it'll perform smaller queries um, and smaller uh, get smaller responses and attempt to use head to identify whether a file exists or not. This can be quite efficient, 
um, a lot of the time. And yeah, so for today's demo, we'll actually go through GoBuster and we'll try to GoBuster with common.txt, um, the upload Tesla motor server. From the results, we can see config.php was identified. In this case, config.php didn't actually have any information in it, but it is good to know that there is a config file there. Next, we can use OTX URLs, which basically goes through and attempts to find the different URLs from within um, Alien Vault. So all we have to do is echo the domain that we're looking for, pipe it into OTX URLs tool, and uh, in this case, I've truncated the uh, data just to make sure it's easy to read. So it's a very simple tool, but it's very efficient and can be used within your workflow automated very quickly. Next is Wayback URLs. So this is a very similar thing. However, it grabs the URLs from the Wayback machine instead of Alien Vault. We can do the same thing by piping the input into the Wayback URLs tool, and then we truncate the data yet again. As you can see, some of the time we also get things like parameters, which can prove quite helpful when trying to, uh, when fuzzing, things like that. Next, we introduce a brand new Burp plugin. Um, I'm the author of the plugin, which I think is pretty cool. So this plugin is based off the Red Hunt Labs Burp plugin called Acid Discovery. This basically goes through and attempts to discover different assets within each website by statically analyzing the responses. Here you can see it automatically created from passive scanning, automatically created um, three different findings uh, with it, with each with uh, different sub findings. Firstly, it'll start off by trying to identify different assets uh, for IP addresses. It'll also try to find different domains and things like that, which can be helpful for things like second order subdomain takeovers or uh, second order domain takeovers in general. And then we also look at the different subdomains uh, found from this single interaction with the website. Next up, we have parameter discovery. For parameter discovery, Parameth seems to be quite a popular tool. Um, in this case, we will not be displaying how to use it because of time constraints. However, um, Parameth does also have a Burp plugin in case you're interested in using it. Um, and it does actually help a fair bit. Now for our final module, automation. So for automation, I like to use Interlays. It's a tool that Kodengo and I co-authored. Co and basically, it multi-threads other tools for you. It also adds in certain parameters, so things like targets. It can add in CIDR notation, GLOB notation. Uh, it can do timeouts, threading, pretty much a lot of different things for you, which I think is pretty cool. So this example that we have here is running 20 threads of X number of domains of AMAS for you automatically. Um, it's great. You get your data very quickly, and it'll pipe it all out into a single text file. Um, you can also use it for things like vhost scans or just random standalone scripts that you have, um, and it can actually help save a lot of time. Another thing that, um, for people who are starting new and don't actually have their own automation system set up yet, um, Lazy Recon, it's an out-of-date project, but it's actually a reasonably good baseline for starting off your own automation system. So um, I advise checking it out. You can update it, um, push to the repository, see how you go. Um, it, it's a pretty cool project. So basically, it's putting together a whole bunch of different tools, an accumulation of tools, and outputting it in a nice and easy format to read. 
and then kind of going from that um, and fingerprinting each application and then attacking it in whatever way possible. So another big thing is everything that we've said so far in this entire module is just the tip of the iceberg. There's plenty of other things that we haven't had the time to cover or we don't even know about ourselves. So make sure that you definitely do go through and try to do your own um, identification of different recon methods and share with all of us. Some acknowledgements I'd also like to make are um, Keringo and Luke actually helped a lot with finding out about different recon methods. Uh, Darktide helped with reviewing the slides. Uh, Vortex helped a lot with Census, CDL, and Tom Nom Nom uh, for some of their tools. Uh, Cafix for AMAS, and pretty much every single tool dev team in the industry. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think this thing would happen. So, thank you very much, and I hope you liked it.